Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail here with another edition of Scrolls, where I'm going to be doing a ranked match. This is kind of a companion episode to the last episode where I got the snot beaten out of me trying my uh, growth energy splash deck, and you can see here just a few days of not playing and suddenly a 1675 rating, which would used to have you safely in the top 1000, now has you uh, outside of the top 1000. So if that matters to you, just keep in mind. Uh, rating is more people play and as people play more you got to get a higher rating for it to matter but today we're gonna be doing mana growth going back to my familiar friend and we'll see I'm probably gonna get outdrawn here and probably have ample opportunities to where I want to have lots of potions of resistance but we are going to be playing against uh, Yao Bao or Yu Bao I'm not sure how to pronounce it but it's a 1700 rated player and my opening draw is pretty terrible I will just say that right now because I have no way to deal with that vetter. I have a lot of <laughs> spells and see this is where it's just kind of like, oh, what can you do about some of the stuff? I'm just going to be quite honest here. It's just a little funny to me that like, you know what, I, I feel very good about my decks usually. I really like this mono growth deck, but if I get a draw like this and he gets a draw like that where it's just, hey look, you can ramp and get a chem falk out. There's just so little I can do because right now he's already going to be able to start hitting hard on the board and I can rumble but that's not going to really do too much. So let's hear Eye of the Eagle, will you save me? Maybe. Sister of the Fox. Alright so I do get a little bit of card draw. So I may be behind early but I'm not out. I can bane. I'm not sure if it's better to bane the vetter or bane the kinfolk brave at this point. So he did Fertile Soil, which sucks to get that out early for me, but I mean, I want to I really want to deal with that guy, but I probably can with the Veteran. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to Bane the Veteran, which is a risky play, but a risk worth taking. We're going to go ahead and Eye the Eagle, see what other creature we get, and we get two Veterans. So that's great, because I'll be able to clear his board next turn, unless he decide he opts to protect the brave or he bear paws him or something but that still delays his attack so a few hits early but I'm still in it and there's another vetter but that's gonna keep him from getting all kinds of energy from the start but there's a sister that he may be able to fertile soil so it's go time unleashing her power is decent but I probably want to hold on to the mangy wolf at this time instead so we're gonna go for five energy and we'll go ahead and get this party started one hasted unit out go ahead and kill that guy and he's probably gonna go right back and uh, veteran me because he has seven cards in his hand so I'm sure he's got a lot up his sleeve and with the with multiple vetters that he's had so far he hasn't had to worry too much about it but it looks like he probably I don't know maybe he does have a veteran maybe he doesn't there's another kinfolk brave so that's gonna force my veteran to come out straight away okay so unleashing her power once again good card to have but we actually ditch the mangy. I think that's that's a little risky. Because <sighs> if he gets a big thing out, I want to be able to deal with it. But yeah, right now we'll just take that. There we go. Fertile soil is going to be good. These are these are actually some good. These are actually some good draws for me. I need to learn to enunciate. Now that means that I won't be able to do too much until next turn, but I may be able to take out his row, assuming he doesn't have something he can throw up in front of it, which is a kind of big beefy assumption to make here but if my sister's alive I can fertile soil otherwise this guy's gonna be dead but he'll be a good meat shield if both of these guys attack so there's another sister of the fox he's getting lots of card draw early and there's another vetter so I know immediately where my ragged wolf is going now so bye bye veteran as much as I want to take out that guy it's not happening this time so two ragged wolves interesting uh, let's start by going ahead and sacrificing this before we lose her. And oh man, three Ragged Wolves. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Bear Paw. Because there's a lot we can do with this to take out his bunch of weenies. And this would be a great time to plop the uh, Ancestral Totem next turn. So, Not going to get a God Hand out anytime soon, but if I can just take out whatever it is he's trying to do, it's going to be... A pretty decent boon. I could unleash in her power one of my guys. I could unleash in her power this guy, but he could just bane it. And when I say this guy, I mean the Kenfolk veteran. So let's see here. Six. I'm almost expecting a quake here. 
because he does have five cards to follow it up with. But no, we get the Druidic Burial Ground instead. So he's really trying to protect his Vetter. That's smart. So let's go ahead and see what we can get on our own. Because it could be that I'm just going to drop the Ancestral Totem. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'll drop the Ancestral Totem and I will just go ahead and try and take out that Burial Ground this turn. So here we go. I mean, actually, you know what? No, we're not. We're not going to drop that totem yet because I can Crimson Bull. Let's actually look at the cards I have in my hand. That was almost a uh, pretty significant mistake. Actually, unfortunately, that was a mistake because I already moved that guy. So shame on me. Let's go ahead and cast this. I'll save the haste for next turn. So that really sucks because I could have taken out that sister. Okay, well, we still want a Crimson Bull just to go ahead and get rid of this stuff. Now playing that guy is kind of pointless this turn, so mistakes all around. But hey, my name is way to fail. But I get a Crimson Bull next turn, so makes up for it a little bit. In fact, I can do the uh, Ghetto God Hand, as it were. If he doesn't have something else to drop in front of it. And he probably will, because right now my goal is to board clear, board clear, board clear. And that's perfect in a way. Well, not that great. Because what that means is I can't totally take out all of his guys this turn. Uh, but what I can do is go ahead and move this down. It is going to be worth my time to go ahead and rally. I don't need the Crimson Bull this time because I can just play the Ragged Wolf. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and cast Rallying because I do want to take out all of his stuff. And unfortunately shit sticks. I won't be able to take out that guy this turn. So that sucks. I guess I'm gonna have to get rid of the Vetter and play the Crimson Bull after all, but wait a minute. Well, hey, there we go. So I just totally wasted one thing there because I can't count either. So this is what I get for uh, late night playtime apparently is my inability to count, my inability to look at the cards and say, hey, this is what I'm doing, but I can God Hand next turn. So there's a Kinfolk Brave. Is he going to drop anything in front of it? No, he's going to Fertile Soil, so he is kind of doing a reset here. Looks like next turn is probably going to be the Quake. So I'm going to save the Ancestral Totem. I am going to ditch the Crimson Bull for this. And let's go ahead and get this God Hand in while the God Handing is good. So if I do 3, 4, 5, and add in the God Hand... I can go and take out, let's see here, that's four damage and then eight, so yeah, I'll have to move this up here. So let's God Hand. He's probably going to Quake, but at least I can take out one of his idols. And if he doesn't Quake, the Quake's probably coming soon. Because you don't Fertile Soil your Kenfolk Brave like that unless you got some Quakes in your hand and you're just trying to go ahead and recover. So that's completely what I expect here. And there we go, Quake! Am I a professional caster? No, but I pretend to be sometimes. So Smiley Face saw that coming. Now the question is who has the better follow-up? So I get a Kenfolk Brave and I get a Brother of the Wolf. Yeah, and you're up a growth. So yeah, there we go. We're talking back and forth. That's fine. Only reason I used God Hand there was because Spider Sense tingled. That's maybe a little lame to say, but if he has another uh, one to follow up with, that's this is just going to get hilarious. But uh, for now, we'll go ahead and put down the Kinfolk Brave right here, and we'll see what we can manage here. I'm expecting Quake the sequel here. And by the way, the reason that I figured he was a Quake if I didn't say it was before was because he played the Brave and then he Fertile Soiled it. So he's just trying to get as much out of it as he can. And in fact, now I'd love to be able to Fertile Soil my Brave. But we'll do what we can. Right now I have an idol. He's damaged one of my idols a little bit, so it's still pretty close. And there's the Great Wolf as well, so... If he gets a mangy, I'm in trouble, because that's going to kill my wolf brother. But I do have a pocket rally. 
and that's probably going to be better than having the ancestral totem here so let's go ahead and make this work so there's a fertile soil which is great there's a sister of the fox which is great uh but i will save that combo for next turn i guess for now what i'm going to do is just play the sister down here so we can't get cute can't get that cute there's a great wolf for me which is awesome and let's go ahead and have our uh, Kenfolk Brave not die in vain, as I do get to do a little bit more idle damage, which is a nice bonus for having the sister there, and I take out his Great Wolf. So good use of Rally, maybe a better play there. And I could play the Fertile Soil and the Wolf Brother next turn. Depends on what cards I get. Depends on if he takes out the sister, which I fully expect him to. So there's another Great Wolf. And that's it, so... Alright. Let's play this nice and carefully. Fertile Soil first. And then I get a Ranger's Bane, which is nice. Or I can play the Wolf Brother, or I can play a Vetter, or I can go ahead and sack something. Whew, tough choices. Because this guy, he's going to be relentless, and he's going to munch through a bunch of stuff if I'm not careful here. So probably at this stage it's better for me just to put out the second wolf brother, just to be protective. I don't really need the vetter at this point, but I get another one anyway and a Kemfolk Brave. So we're going to try to be a little more cautious here, try and protect this guy. I got some good cards, I got a Ghetto God Hand again. And if I do sack a creature, I can actually play that and the Kenfolk Veteran. So let's see here, there, there's his veteran. The question is, is he going to ban this wolf brother? No, he's going to Crimson Bull. So there goes my guy right there. So very, very interesting position to be in now because I can't totally take this guy out. But what I can do, let's see here. So if I bane, yeah, I can, I can solve this problem. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and summon a wolf right here. And this is the tete a -te that you tend to get with this kind of stuff. Ugh. Alright. Well, I do want this wolf to kind of be the protector wolf up here. Because it's I'm going to be relying on the wolf brother's damage to take things out. So let's see here. I have six... And I need seven to play all of these, so let's go ahead and sacrifice the Vetter for resources. You will not have died in vain. And let's go ahead and rally. So cast that. Crimson Bull, Ghetto God Hand. So many LOL. Yep, and that's where my deck's a little different than other people. And that's where I kind of like this deck so well, because it does let me just push again and again and again and again. And that's how I kind of clear the board. So many Eagle Eyes. And right now I'm kind of in control. I've just got to keep control, keep the pressure coming. Because he does have five. I don't know why my voice broke there. He has five. So he can get some other stuff on the board to kind of protect himself real quick. But with my nine growth, I can make a good number of plays. And once again, I got to worry about the mangy wolf. But let's see here. I can actually Ranger's Bane. And, but the question is, do I want to or do I want to play the Kenfolk Brave? Probably smarter for me to direct damage this guy, to be honest. <sighs> but the Brave is so good to get out, and I want to have both of those Great Wolves. Ugh, my gut tells me... My gut's telling me a bunch of different things, to be honest. Because the direct damage is, does mean that guy's going to die eventually. So, oh, this is a tough choice. But the Kenfolk Brave is going to put a lot of pressure on him that he could take out with a veteran. And I don't have adequate cards to protect it, so I'm going to talk myself out of getting rid of that. And there we go. I can bear paw this guy. And that's actually maybe even a better move. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do some direct damage here. We're going to bear paw. That delays the attack a turn, but it makes this guy way more beefy and survivable. And I don't have much to Fertile Soul yet except for the Ragged Wolf, but we'll possibly change that. Don't want to accidentally move him. So a lot to think about that turn. 
And if he doesn't do something to protect that great wolf, it's dead. Which is, of course, what we want. Of course, he does have eight cards and now eight resources, so Ragged Wolf, he's not god-handing here, but he could do a Crimson Bull and Rally, so combo right back at me. Nice. So like, just like that, just another, another combo. So now my wolf's still dead. Yeah, it could be. And this is probably a situation where it's not... Well, let's see here. I could... Hmm, things to think about. I could clear his board by uh, summoning with this guy and dropping two of these things. So let's go ahead and get out another great wolf. So we're going to go ahead and hurt you there like that. Let's go ahead and get out a mangy wolf like so. So suddenly these guys are all ready and able to attack. Yeah. So I could actually do some board damage here if I wanted to. And I think I will. So summoning wolves. Like so. So that great wolf's still dead. Maybe didn't need to use the ranger's ban on him after all, but at least that made sure that he died. And now he has nothing on the board again, which is the exact situation I want to be in. If this wolf brother dies, he's done his job. I'd prefer for him to be protected, but it's a little more important that I protect my wolves here. Now, I could end the game if I got a god hand, but yeah, good luck with that. Um, right now, my goal is mainly just to really try and spread the board, put as much shit up here as possible. And we'll see if we can do that. I just gotta wait on what he's trying to do. He has five cards, he has eight growth, so he definitely has some plays he can make, and there's the quake. Takes out some of my stuff. Like I said, that wolf brother did his job. Maybe he can quake twice in a row, but he's gonna put the sister of the fox up, get some more scrolls, try again next turn. So, god hand. Let's think about this for a second. If I god hand, I can take out another idol or two. It'd be better for me to try and play some cards, perhaps. But let's see if we can get... No, we're not going to get anything super special here. The rumble could be very useful, though, if I pick up another mangy. So what we're going to do is move these guys up here. And we're going to deny his ability to fertile soil, because I bet that's what he's trying to hold on to. So there's an actual god hand instead of ghetto god hand. God hand! That's the lamest thing ever. But there we go, two idols down, and this is what I like. That's going to be annoying to defend. I feel your pain just a little bit. But there we go, he's going to be able to take out one of my wolves. And he gets a vetter as well, so he's going to really be trying to run the field now. And I can Ranger's Bane here. question is that I do have a lot that I want to play. Uh, we're going to get rid of the Bane here because it is possible for, for me to end this. Yeah, it is possible for me to end it. I don't know if I'll be able to this turn, but what we are going to go ahead and do is to just clear this part of the board. And let's go ahead. We're going to save our good friend the Kinfolk Brave for another turn. And we're just going to go ahead and drop you down here. And since I have five left, we're going to go... Oh, I should have dropped the Great Wolf first. That was a big mistake on my part, because I could have gotten him to attack next turn. But there we go. Just trying to hurt him just a little bit. <sighs> yeah, I really wish I dropped that Great Wolf before the Mangy, but all these guys are synced up now. Uh, if he, he could have the Desperation Quake in there. It's probably gone through his hands by now. But he does have nine growth. So surely he's got something up his sleeve. So there's another Kenfold veteran. 
And there's an Ancestral Totem, so he's trying to play a little more defensively if he can. And Brother of the Wolf is good. We don't need two Rumbles at this point. What we need is something that'll get us to go a little faster. Can you end? No, unfortunately I can't end. Not this turn. So, let's see here, we'll save the rumble. We'll go ahead and put this up here. We'll go ahead and drop you back one. Go ahead and put this down here because I want to try and put more pressure. Well, let's see here, it doesn't, it's not really gonna make too much of a difference one way or another. So we'll save that. And we'll go ahead and drop you down just to try and be extra protective. Sadly, no. So there's the Quake. Takes out a bunch of my stuff, hurts him, maybe a little more than me. There's the Druidic Burial Ground, so we can see where he put the eggs in the basket. And let's see what I can do here. Sister of the Fox. Now this is unleashing our power is just for creatures. And this is where not being able to end the game could really, really hurt me. But you know what? First things first, let's go with the RNG. Can I get a rumble? Can I get a rumble? Oh, I almost got a rumble. Actually, I did. So all we're going to do here is just drop here for the extra attack power. Drop the sister. Get the kinfolk out. Go ahead and ditch the Unleash in our power. And there we go. That's why Rumble saves the damn day. Victory there with my Monogrowth deck. I do pop back up in rating and Yaobo play that very well, but I was just able to get ahead on the denial curve. But see, unfortunately, for some reason, I'm not tracking stats right now. That might be the Summoner mod. I'm not sure. But this is way to fail with a surprise victory. Well, I don't want to say super surprise, but I was able to eke out a victory after just some early mistakes. Very well played, Yabao. Or, I'm sorry I'm pronouncing it wrong, but hey, fun game. That scrolls. You win, you lose. And I like my Monogrowth deck. It works very well for me. So, this is Way to Fail. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all next time.